So welcome back to CIS 255. We have um, a lot of on our, on our plate today. I don't know if I will be able to uh, go to each particular presentation uh, so that we can uh, identify where the information is. But let's, uh, let's try just uh, really uh, sort of like informally talk about uh, the most important topics that we are facing right now is uh, the talk about pointers arrays, uh, memory access. Uh, possibly we may get to uh, C++ references uh, today or maybe next time. Uh, also, we have to distinguish between uh, dynamic memory allocation and uh, uh, static memory allocation, or just a local stack um, uh, type of allocation. So a lot of this, uh, but uh, you may find that though all of these presentations uh, here in this section right at the beginning are essentially where the information is coming from. So I will come back to those particular places uh, as we move along. But for let's create um, let's create a new project uh, and just uh, run some examples uh, which should uh, uh, help us out with the uh, with the direction in which we're moving with our current homeworks. There are now two homeworks that uh, we have uh, to deal with. Um, so a new project, and I'll just create a simple console application and get started. So we'll say console application and um, uh, I don't know, maybe we can call it indirection. In general, indirection is uh, something will be best uh, describing topics of, of the day. Say as 255 projects, uh, that's where I'm going to gonna go with this. And um, as always, no precompile header, empty project. And just mm -hmm. finish. So uh, C and C++ are general purpose programming language, but traditionally viewed as uh, um, those languages where you can do some system programming. System programming means that you should be able to access um, components of the operating system, uh, create components of the operating system, and that suggests that you should be able to access uh, devices and memory. So today's topic is uh, going to, we can start with uh, memory access. So we have this uh, system uh, programming language in front of us. How do we access memory? So the, the, the memory access looks like this. Memory, so memory is represented by mm, something that symbolically is, is uh, available, right? And then some sort of a location is also uh, uh, specified. So we have memory and we have location. So in the most uh, primitive form, I could organize this by saying integer memory equals zero, okay? And likewise, uh, integer location, well, I don't know. That could be really anything, right? Something, some crazy number that identifies place in, in memory somehow. And the challenge is that this needs to be a valid number, right? It cannot be just any number. By the way, what integer memory zero tells us? Well, perhaps integer memory zero suggests that maybe memory begins at some base zero address and moves on to, you know, higher numbers. 
So therefore, uh, using memory uh, zero is uh, um, uh, suggesting here that uh, we try to use memory from the very beginning, like from the offset zero in memory array uh, all the way down to location uh, which we specify. Now, in our presentation, uh, which was uh, which first we looked at uh, in CIS uh, 155, uh, was that uh, we have this presentation on memory access, and uh, it basically takes you through step by step, um, uh, you know, syntax and explanation on all of this. So you may want to look at this uh, at some point. Again, today I would like to mostly concentrate on on the um, uh, syntax uh, and uh, some of the f foundational f foundation concepts that are uh, uh, specific to, to this topic. So uh, I may or may not formally go to uh, the topics in this presentation. So let's move on with this, uh, with this particular idea. Okay, so this uh, probably is not going to be very helpful without us actually saying that well, you know what, rather than specifying some crazy address, uh, what should happen is that maybe we can store some characters here, like uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G, and so forth, right? So maybe we have uh, characters stored here. It's kind of strange attempt to initialize integer with, uh, <laughs> with uh, uh, you know, a string of characters, a literal string here. So, as you uh, perhaps already recall, and jumping ahead of ourselves here, I can tell you that when you use uh, the so-called uh, C string, uh, what happens here is that mm, the result of this expression is that, of course, memory is allocated for each individual character. And what this expression, quote, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, uh, close quote returns back is actually the address of the first character or wait a minute address of the first character that sounds interesting because I'm trying to use uh, this uh, memory access somehow so maybe if I forcefully convert this address to an integer right just like this I mean it sort of like looks a bit uh, crazy uh, but I know that the memory is being allocated and then I say, okay, I know that address is being returned back, so I'll convert it to integer because integer is the, one of the most popular data types available, and I will use it as my location, right? Then if I go to my memory and use this location, maybe I can extract characters. So perhaps what I could do is to say um, uh, include, uh, you know, something like IO stream, right? And then use, uh, I'll spare, so let's just say using uh, namespace std. So we can just use cout in this particular code. Just say cout display. Uh, display memory at this location. I would expect us to be able to access character A. Okay? All right. So. Uh, if I try to compile this, just uh, save this and say build, uh, build this, uh, compile this, um, see what happens, um, if, if this is possible at all. Uh, the error message that I'm getting he, right here says, um, subscript requires array or pointer type. What it means that when uh, this, this sort of syntax was first used with those square brackets, right? It was back in the days of uh, BCPL uh, programming language, right? Uh, which came even before C, uh, was that the, um, specifically on PDP-7 machine architecture, uh, all data, including characters and floating point, uh, type and uh, integer, uh, there was just one data type, an 18-bit integer. And so this syntax would work there, but later on the decision was made that 
the, you know, as, as the uh, um, instruction set architecture for future uh, CPUs matured and, and got to recognize different data types, the switch was made to say uh, that we need to actually specify the data type we're trying to access in memory. So this is, this is uh, an applicable way of getting to a character in memory, right? So let's save this, let's save this.